scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. When they wanted to fight Jesus, their attention was on two things. Number one, his followers. Number two, his message. This was what threatened the entire Sanhedrin council. They were not afraid of Jesus as a person. Something about the quality of his teaching was stirring a revolution. What is this man teaching? It was affecting the minds of the people. And so they wanted to know, number one, what are you teaching? Number two, who is hearing you? This is a strategy. The devil will come after you in ministry. When he comes, he wants to know two things. Number one, what is the content? Because he knows that words make he knows that truths ideas transform so before i attack that church let me know if it's worth my attack what are you teaching if you're teaching opinions he said you're already defeated you just continue i will leave you to think you are making progress there are many people who don't have attacks in their lives it does not mean they are doing well it's a sign that there's no point attacking them the error in doctrine has already made you defeated. He asks Jesus of his disciples and he asks of his doctrine. Two things that will scare the devil over any church. What are you teaching? What is the content of the truth you are using to build believers? You see that? Because the information that you bring will shape their understanding and eventually begin to influence the systems jesus never sat in a house of parliament yet he was almost these guys were afraid they said there is something about this man the content of his information let's look at doctrine in the ministry of the apostles are we still here acts chapter 2 and verse 42 Acts 2.42 And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. The Bible says, this is the early church. They continued in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. This is what made them mighty. This was the scope of their spiritual activity every time they gathered. They listened to a thorough exegesis of doctrine, fellowship, breaking of bread prayers acts chapter 5 and verse 28 acts chapter 5 and verse 28 now watch this when they caught the apostles their concern was not just the people the human bodies the threat to the government of the day was the doctrine this was what the devil did not want saying did we not strictly command you that you should not teach in this name and behold ye have filled jerusalem with your doctrine more than branches more than programs what was influencing the territory was doctrine there is something you are teaching that is making armed robbers stop stealing. There is something you are teaching that is transforming society. How come the men in a territory are suddenly becoming responsible corporately 
there is something you can trace the growth of society to the doctrine that fills that place you can trace the deprivation and the retrogression in society also it's an uncomfortable truth but it's true the quality of the life of people within a territory among other factors is a reflection of the quality of the truths that the spiritual leaders within that territory communicate you see africa is a very spiritual continent on average every week the average believer including an unserious believer submerges himself in some sort of spiritual training either a sunday service please don't feel i'm not you remember that this is what we're talking as men of god is that true we're examining a few things so this is not this is not a call to sarcasm whatsoever we're just challenging ourselves to rise to higher dimensions there is a sunday service maybe a tuesday service a wednesday service most likely a night vigil some kind of spiritual activity happening all week that means if i handpick a believer who has been within a christian circle for two three four years and i ask him basic questions about the christian faith he should be able to rise in defense of that truth otherwise we must hold the pastor accountable what is the content of your teaching not necessarily the insincerity in character may be a sincere person They have filled Port Harcourt with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon her head. Can you imagine that? Romans chapter 16 and verse 17. I want you to see why the apostles were effective. The Holy Spirit we have today is the same Holy Spirit they had. The God they pray to is the same God we pray to. But we are not seeing their results because there is a missing link the doctrine they communicated is largely not the doctrine that we're communicating and the emphasis that they placed on doctrine we might not be pressing that far now i beseech you brethren paul is speaking mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine i like paul He's not mentoring based on opinions. He's saying, listen, listen. Everything you do should be referenced to this doctrine. There are people who cause offenses and division. How do we know that what they are saying is divisive? With respect to the doctrine that is being taught. It is based on doctrine. We can have the audacity to tell someone you are right, you are wrong. It is based on doctrine. We can judge prophecy and say it is true you came back from heaven, but something is questionable about this encounter. You cannot just say, I don't like what you are saying. There has to be a reference to your defense. The reference is doctrine. The average believer is confused and cannot tell whether a thing is right or wrong. You see that? Because that doctrinal reference is not there. Let's look at two more scriptures. First Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. In fact, I think Paul's, Paul's, Paul's epistle to Timothy has about the largest, in the New Testament now, about the largest compendium of this word doctrine 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 because he was mentoring his son in the gospel here's what four verse one says now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith the bible says and give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons so the devil too has his mentorship system he can make you become something exact there is a body of truth whether you choose to serve god or satan is the same way you will grow doctrine there is something called the doctrine of devils a good person can teach the doctrine of devils you don't have to be bad or fake you just have to be ignorant and there are many many sincere doctrines in the body of christ that need to be edited from the light of scripture you see there are four principal ways i wish we had time 
there are four principal ways the bible recommends that we know god knowing god is not a mystery there are four biblical channels only four channels if you ever want to know the god of the bible there are only four channels the bible recommends number one is scripture the first authorized channel that can help anyone know god is scripture are we together scripture reveals the character of god scripture reveals his modus operandi so you know god when you study scripture you can meet a believer who did not know anything about the christian faith and get that person saved and hand over scripture and teach that person scripture and he can grow in the knowledge of god scripture number one number two the names of god we know god by exploring the dimensions of him captured in his name you would wonder why he's called the god of abraham isaac jacob rafa sikenu all of these names were dimensions of him the moment the nation of israel saw that dimension revealed they preserved it in a name so that every time their children wanted to learn that dimension they would draw that name from the archive of their experience and say look we never knew that god could move like this but when we saw it we said we'll not waste this experience we have to archive it for our children so they saved it you can use the names of god to learn him number three the third way that we know god is through the person jesus the christ the bible calls him the image of the invisible god calls him the word the logos of god that has been made flesh so i can know god when i study jesus i hope you know theologically speaking we're ministers of the gospel until jesus came nobody could accurately say they knew god there was a lot of haziness and confusion about God. Even among the prophets, they credited both good and bad to God. There was no standard, no reference. So one of the assignments of Jesus was not just to come and die. He came as a manuscript and a marking script. He came so that we will use him to start editing our ideas about God. Everything God said, Jesus manifested. Whatever you said God said that Jesus did not do, you are in error. So your assignment is to look unto him and begin to edit what the prophets and the law and every other person said about God. The things that superstition said about God. We compare it. Jesus came as a revelation of the Father. So I can look at Jesus. Are you seeing why the Bible was so detailed about his earthwork because it does not want you to miss any information everything about his earthwork it was more than a story it was god in action so he's saying study study how he treated children study what he did on crusade grounds what did he do when he saw the sick if it's true that god said i have loved you with an everlasting love i have drawn you with my loving kindness we can only verify if he's lying or not by looking at jesus how far did Jesus go to prove the love of the Father? He died. Greater love had no man than this, than a man laid down his life. So we know God did not lie because Jesus proved he was true. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. How do we know God is not lying? By looking at Jesus. The last enemy that can be destroyed in this earth realm is death. Whoever destroys death by leaving this earth and coming back into it at will you see there is a law nobody dies and comes back by himself it has to take someone in the earth to call you in but jesus showed that god was all powerful indeed by dying and calling himself back it was his entry back into the earth that led to psalm 24 lift up your heads O ye gates the gates were surprised why are you saying we should open nobody on earth is calling you when you were coming from heaven a prophet has called you but now you are out of the earth and we are not hearing anyone call you and he says don't mistaken just because a baby was called this man who is coming now is the king of glory the lord strong and mighty the lord mighty in battle are we together so you know God by looking unto Jesus. 
if all you know about Jesus is that he just came and died for sinners you've missed a major part of why he was here his first assignment was to correct our aberrated view about the father how many of you have heard stories about people and you had all kinds of ideas until you met them or you met those who were very close to them and you felt so disappointed so broken and you said i'm sorry god forgive me i was told this ceo is not a good man now look at this five of my children now have jobs because of him and you go back and you keep repenting and say god forgive me that's what jesus came to do if you study jesus you know you are knowing god when there is a lot of repentance in your life because you should find a lot of gaps in the things you have blamed God about. Jesus. When it was time to feed 5,000 with two loaf, five loaves and two fish, he didn't say those who understood or heard me move one side. He fed everyone. So when the Bible says the increase of the earth is for all, that even the king is fed by the increase in the field, it is true. Jesus came as the logos of God. The word made flesh, the logos. The, the, the word logos is the Greek word thoughts. The intent of a man that desires to find expression. Everything God was thinking, Jesus was living. Next time somebody says, I want to know you God. There's no mystery about it. What many people mean is I want to be caught up in the realm of the spirit. You will most likely meet familiar spirits. God's authorized channel is scripture if you cannot respect scripture that you can see it's not an angel that is invisible that you that's the law remember and then the last way we know god is through your experience in that order it is important but only the fourth your experience job said i have heard of you with the hearing of the ears now my eyes have seen you experience you can build a track record about god by yourself oh talk to our mothers and they will tell you there is something about god they knew not by preaching when the woman was about to die because of her pregnancy she called upon the name of the lord and rolled on the ground and that baby lived so every time she sees another woman who says look i'm about dying she says sit down let me tell you something about god i didn't go to school oh but there is a song i raised in 1975 every time i am in trouble when i raised this song the nation of israel had songs that were like quotes when it was clear that defeat was imminent they didn't just sing praise and worship you are good and your mercy if they started singing that song against you no matter how you were winning it was a code for victory please sit down this is not even what we're teaching you remember what we're talking about doctrine i only digress because we are dealing with the issue of knowing god is god helping us the knowledge of god you want to know god scripture the names of god jesus your experience it's impossible to pass through this and not know god mm -mm. Mm -mm. hallelujah so back to doctrine one last scripture hebrews 13 and verse 9 hebrews 13 and verse 9 the bible says be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines. For it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meats which have profited them that have been occupied therein. He's talking about several things. Paul was largely correcting a lot of errors, a lot of imbalances, and he began to teach them doctrine. Who is a disciple a disciple is one who accepts and assists in spreading the doctrines of scripture a disciple is one who accepts and helps in spreading the doctrines of scripture when we follow christ 
we follow him because number one we accept and we believe the truths are we together yes and then number two we help in spreading it so when the bible says in matthew 28 let's look at it now you will understand what the bible is saying matthew chapter 28 from verse 18 here's what jesus said to us matthew 28 from verse 18 and jesus came and spake unto them saying all authority the word power there is the word exousia authority all authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth 19 on the strength of this information go ye therefore and teach are you seeing now he didn't just send us to preach to preach means to declare to teach means to explain to guide to mentor to bring into comprehension that's what it means to teach go ye and teach all nations all nations does not mean all countries all fields of endeavors are we together now all of the mountains go there and teach baptizing them in the name of the father the son and of the holy spirit 20 teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you and whilst you are doing this be assured that i am with you all way whilst you are doing this you can be sure that my divine presence is going with you even to the ends of the earth colossians chapter 1 paul speaking to the church in Colossae from verse 28 and 29 paul the assignment of presenting everyone he says whom we preach warning every man and teaching every man that in all wisdom we may present everyone mature or complete or whole in christ jesus 29 it says whereunto i also labor striving according to his walking which walketh in me mightily paul said look all my travels and everything you see me visiting the church in this the church in that correcting all kinds of things imbalances impartations travels all that i'm doing is i am striving to see to it that the body of christ and those committed to my care that i'm able to present them complete in christ if you're still with me please say amen, amen. so the course content for the believers education is called doctrine every believer that comes under the influence of the doctrine of scripture will become something exact something predictable regardless denomination regardless the approach to ministry now we may not always agree in terms of our modus operandi we may not agree in terms of our personalities here and there but there are certain truths that are called the foundational pillars of the christian faith if you do not believe this you are not a christian if you do not teach it you are also not a christian there are certain things common to all women black white yellow african spanish there are things common to men regardless location regardless territory that's how it is when we talk about unity unity is not uniformity no we will never be the same verbatim our experiences with god our levels of transformation the systems of mentorship that we are under will create those differences but regardless what the divide is there are certain foundational pillars of the christian faith hebrews chapter 6 therefore leaving the principles of the doctrine of christ let us go on unto perfection not laying again the foundations of six of them number one repentance from dead works number two faith towards god verse two number three the doctrine of baptisms number four of laying on of hands number five the resurrection of the dead number six eternal judgment and he prays a serious prayer in verse three and this we will do if god permits 
there are foundational pillars please listen very carefully you see believers do not just grow because truth is taught truth has to be methodically arranged like a building to be able to mature the saints are we together now please don't feel bad don't feel insult insulted i apologize if you do so but then imagine with me for instance that someone just gets saved completely not a christian and the first message he hears is on prosperity you see chances are that that person's christian experience will be wrecked into pieces because he's not learned how to crucify the flesh he's not built character are we together now exposing that person to that body of knowledge the truth is not it is truth but it will kill him it's not sequentially arranged he's not even equipped for the attacks that come by reason of that level of blessing we must not just build believers we must build believers methodically line upon line truth upon truth tomorrow is sunday millions of pulpits around the world will be filled with men and women passionate men and women who will be teaching can we begin to make these adjustments by focusing on doctrine what we largely do is just a topical exegesis of the word and for many people i understand how burdensome it can be to preach and come up with messages so sometimes you sit and say ah what have i not preached for a long time in this church i'm tired right now i have three services let's try faith all right so you listen to a message or two just go online get one or two scriptures put things together and you know the fearful thing about the grace of god is when you stand up here it will look like you've been studying since last year because you are under the influence of that grace that grace can cover shame in a tremendous way but it's not an endorsement of your current state you can stand and preach something off script completely it may even be one of the most powerful messages you would have preached that year and you go back repenting before god and say lord thank you for covering for me me and you we know that i don't have an idea of what happened on this stage come on pastors Do you know the reason why you fear teaching on the altar? Do you know the reason why you feel emotionally bullied by another man? Because you are teaching opinions. When you are teaching doctrine, the truths don't come from you. It is the explanation and the exegesis of it that comes from you. So there is no need to fear. The body of truth is exact. You finish and start again. Listen, when it has to do with the knowledge of God, our exploring God is infinite. Even in heaven, we'll keep learning him. But as far as the excelling of a believer on earth is concerned, the body of truth allocated for our growth and maturity is finite. You can cover the curriculum and start again and not feel guilty for going back. It's not that you don't have new messages. So the pressure is that, ah, let my members not say there are people teaching volume 7 part 1 volume 8 part 5 and you are here it seems like you are struggling with something so that pressure pushes us into saying look what is the new thing i have not said save yourself that stress there is an exact body of truth that builds and provided that is what you are teaching no matter how simple find rest every other thing garnished on it is just the, the psychological prowess the intelligence and all of that but at the basic level everyone should be able to mature believers once you can understand and you can teach the course content is given to you already doctrine so there is no excuse there's no such thing as i don't have the gift of teaching i'm not really a teacher you know these guys are the ones who teach and then because of that we said you know what don't worry i even want to teach worship team come raise a powerful song let's start praying and then no 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 there are a few ministers around the world this nation and across africa they teach in about the most simple ways sometimes annoyingly simple but you look at the quality of men that they have raised do you know why because the content of their teaching is true they are methodical about it 
whether the lecturer is in uni Lauren, whether it's a Yoruba lecturer, whether it's an Igbo lecturer, a South South lecturer, a Northern lecturer, the person's accent, his level of understanding, etc., is not is not too much to alter the curriculum. So the same students can be taught by an Igbo lecturer, a white man coming from the U.S., a visiting professor from the U.K., and then people within that region. And regardless the students, you are sure that after four or five years, you are going to graduate a predictable kind of people. Their accents may differ. Their abilities to explain. There are lecturers, respectfully speaking, who are quite on the conservative side. They can talk as if they are talking to themselves. Others are very engaging and happy. Those things are just added advantages. Once the truth is there, the students will learn and their results will show they have learned it. Fine rest, men of God. The pressure that we are putting on ourselves to attain onto certain levels. It is true that some of these gifts and some of these engracings come with um, a level of charismatism around it, I confess. So once these kinds of things happen, there is that, there is that drive to want to be celebrated, I understand. But find rest. Tomorrow, go on your pulpit and teach doctrine with power. Teach it with truth. Teach it with conviction. When I was in the seminary, when I was in the Anglican seminary, we had something called the Apostles' Creed. The Apostles' Creed, now I'm not, I'm not, I know that I'm speaking to people across different denominations, but I wish there was a way you could find for me and project what we call the Apostles' Creed on the screen. If you can find that thing, media, I promise to give you a big hug. That for me represents about the most accurate or at least commendably accurate presentation of the believer's creed this is a summary of what we stand for this is who a christian is it's important we know that some of you here are owners or directors or senior executives around companies and you have all kinds of creeds is that true that you compel your staff to learn to indoctrinate them to understand why they are here whether it's a creed towards efficiency a creed towards excellence team spirit whatever it is please find it for me if you can i apologize for putting you under this inconvenience but it's important so we're dealing with doctrine and discipleship we are not in ministry truly if we are not teaching doctrine do the believers under your care, are they still in doubt that Jesus Christ is God? Do they know that? Hold on before we begin to teach all of the mysteries of this and that. Just calm down. Leave that. We're going there. Do our members know that Jesus is Lord? Do they understand redemption? Can we random pick one member and bring him up stage? And say, give us your understanding about the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ. Which is the foundation. You will be amazed at how many of our workers, respectfully speaking, deacons, and even some of us men of God, we may not be able to articulate redemption. How about prayer? How about faith? The Bible says in this kingdom, the just lives by his faith. How about the body of Christ? How about resurrection? Do our members know that Jesus is coming back? Do they know the benefit of being saved? The reason why there are hardly altar calls on our pulpit is not because we are bad. It's because we ourselves need a reorientation about the value. The Bible says there is no other name given unto man under heaven by which we must be saved. Are we together what of the holy spirit 
do our members understand the holy spirit do they understand the priesthood ministry of a believer do they understand the responsibility that makes for kingdom advance thank you thank you let's give these people a big big god bless you <laughs> ladies and gentlemen that right there is a very serious creed i hope i'm able to see everything as clear as i want to but let me attempt to read it am i boring you this is a pastor's conference i know impartation is coming but you just pay attention the oil is useless when there is no vessel remember it is the vessel that gives credence to the oil i believe in god the father almighty it says the maker of heaven and earth is that true and jesus christ his only son our lord that is true but i may edit that now because he's not the only son again he was the only son but now he's the first of we the begotten you see that now he's not god's only son now mm -mm. he was his only son but now he's called many sons into glory He was conceived by the Holy Spirit. How shall these things be seen that you know not a man? He says the power of the highest shall overshadow you. Oh beautiful, thank you. Born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. Was crucified. Dead. It's important you know he was crucified. He did not just die. If he just died, he could not have been a curse. Because the law says curse is every man who hangs on a tree. If he died on the ground, he would be a dead man. He needed to die on the tree. So the crucifixion of Jesus is a major aspect of the Christian life. He died. You have to believe he died. If he did not die, then there is no way he would have collected the keys that we gave Adam. Revelations 1, I was he that was dead and now he's alive and I hold the keys. It was his death that gave him the entrance when sinners die where do they go to so the only way he had to go to hell being a righteous man was to become sin so that if he died he will now give him the the entrance to go to the place of the dead are we together now he died as you and me what would have been our future so he went there and when he met satan the bible tells us paul was teaching us the, the drama that happened there in Hades. That when he got to hell, my goodness. Did you know that Satan did not even understand the strategy? When he died, all of a sudden celebration was to start in hell. And then they see this man. Jesus Christ went to hell without the assistance of the Holy Ghost. I hope you know that. He went as man in the strength of man. That's what made him the second Adam. He went there. And the Bible says all the demons and principalities were on him, forcing him to bow. What is him bowing? Acknowledging lordship. Because Jesus being the express image of the Father, the word. Are we blessed? This is what makes us different from different religions. There are many religions that teach what we teach too. This is the dividing line. Do you know why we need to restore doctrine to the body of Christ? otherwise after many years of laboring we will not know who is a christian again and the devil is an expert he will keep bringing pseudo christian expressions until we lose the conscience it's already happening to many people so he went and when the legal claims of justice were satisfied the bible says he made a public show of them triumphing over them in it and he did not just stop there he now went to satan and he said give me the keys what keys the keys that came from adam through eve to him are you seeing that now and when he collected the keys the bible tells us that there were saints who were then abraham's bosom i don't want to bring any controversy but your bible people you know and apostle peter taught us that he went there and preached to them when he preached to them he gave them a chance to believe when they believed he opened the prison gates he said follow me when he resurrected it's in your bible he was the first begotten and then other saints came through the streets of jerusalem they saw them 
The hymn says, up from the grave he arose with the mighty triumph all his foes. He arose the victor from the dark domain and he lives forever with his saints to reign. I know it's old school, but not every old school is old. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.